Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Easy Grilled Sticky Ribs. That's right, I'm going to show you my favorite way to grill ribs, which of course is not the same thing as barbecued ribs. Right, those are cooked low and slow in a smoker and served as is, with a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side maybe. Whereas these are cooked first and then sliced, and then each rib is glazed with our beautiful sticky sauce on the grill. And while I do enjoy actual barbecued ribs, I will take a plate of these over those anytime. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is mix up a very simple dry spice rub, which for me is nothing more than some kosher salt, some white sugar, some freshly ground black pepper, some paprika, and some garlic powder. No, not garlic salt, garlic powder. And that's it, we'll take a spoon and give this a mix. And by the way, as long as you include some salt and sugar, the spices you put in here are completely and totally up to you. So feel free to add anything and everything you like. And then once that's mixed, we'll go ahead and set it aside. And we will grab a sheet pan and cover it with a large piece of aluminum foil, right, preferably heavy duty. And then on that, we will place down one rack of baby back ribs. And we'll start with the meat side down, bone and membrane side up. Speaking of which, we are definitely not peeling off that membrane, which apparently all the rib experts say you need to do, but you don't. All you really need to do is take a sharp knife and give this rack the old poke a poke all over. And then once we poke, we can also slash and just slice it across at an angle like this and then back the other way like that. And that's gonna allow our dry rub to penetrate in. And by the time these are cooked and grilled and glazed, no one, and I mean no one, will be able to tell the membrane is intact. And that's it, we'll go ahead and grab our spice rub and coat this very generously on both sides. Oh, and a quick production note. I'm only gonna show one in the video, but the ingredient amounts for the rub and the glaze would be enough to do two of these racks. And as I like to joke about in every video we use a rub, there is no actual rubbing involved. Okay, we're gonna sprinkle and maybe press, but any actual rubbing is optional. And then once that rack has been thoughtfully seasoned, we will turn that with the membrane side up into the concave position, at which point we'll fold the ends of our foil in, and then each side to wrap it up. And we don't have to get this super, super tight, but sort of snug would be nice. And why I like to wrap it in that position is because I think the juices that form on the rack are gonna sit and be held in place if we do it in the concave position. Whereas if we had that curved meat side up, the juices would run down to the pan. And would that make a difference? No idea. But my intuition says it does which is good enough for me. And that's it, this is now ready to transfer into the center of a 250 degree oven for exactly two hours, or until it looks like pretty much exactly the same, since it's covered in foil. And then what we'll do is just let it sit out, cooling down to room temp, or very close to it, at which point we're gonna transfer that in the fridge for a couple hours or overnight, until it is nice and cold and firm, at which point we can pull it out, unwrap it, and slice these ribs up. But before we do that, we should probably defat. So we'll go ahead and use our fingers to kind of brush that off. And if we're really good, we should probably save that to use it for our baked beans, or to grease our cornbread skillet, or use it in so many other delicious things. And yes, there's gonna be some on both sides. And the main reason to remove that is because if you have too much, it's gonna drip into your coals, and it may cause a large grease fire, which is the last thing we need to have happen when we're chilling outside, sipping a beer, grilling up some sticky ribs. But anyway, once that's removed, we'll go ahead and take a knife and we will slice between each of these bones, which I think are a lot easier to see if you have it in this position, and do your best to slice perfectly evenly between each bone so we get the same amount of meat on each rib. Oh yeah, we've all ended up with that one bone that only has meat on one side. And I don't want that rib, do you? And as we get towards the thicker end, you might have to deal with a little bit of cartilage issue on this one edge. So we should probably turn it and start our cut there so we can find our way through and then complete the slice. And that's it, once cut, those are now ready for the old grilling glaze. Which brings us to the last thing we have to mix up. And that would be our basting sauce slash glaze, which starts with some good old fashioned American ketchup, plus a very generous amount of brown sugar, some soy sauce for a little bit of salt and savoriness. We'll also do a little splash of rice vinegar, as well as a little bit of vegetable oil, and then last but not least, a few shakes of cayenne for good luck. And that's it, we'll give this a mix with a spoon, and we're done. And yes, if you want to use a different kind of sweetener, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Winnie the Pooh, of glazing what's not really barbecue. 
Which reminds me, honey would also work beautifully instead of the brown sugar. But we do need some kind of sweetener here for that whole sticky rib thing to work out. And that's it, our sauce is now ready to brush on. Which means we can go ahead and start our fire and let it burn down to some nice ashy coals before we place our ribs over the top. And I generally just go ahead and grill each side, but if you want to grill the tops and bottoms, go ahead. But anyway, we'll leave it on that first side for about two minutes, at which point we'll give them a flip. And as soon as those have all been turned, we'll go ahead and brush over our glaze. And by the time we finish brushing, these are ready to turn back over, at which point we'll repeat the entire process. And regarding that, this entire technique can be summarized with the following instructions, which is every time we flip, we brush, and every time we brush, we flip. And we keep repeating that, brushing and flipping, flipping and brushing, until our ribs are as caramelized as we like. All right, don't forget these are already cooked, so all we're doing here is heating them through and getting them to the perfect level of tenderness, which is really not gonna take that long. And in case you're keeping score at home, these were on the grill exactly 12 minutes total, theoretically six minutes on each side. And yes, to save time, I am gonna edit out a little bit of the flipping and the brushing and the brushing and the flipping. And really the only way to screw these up is to get greedy and try to caramelize them too much. Since if we go too far, that glaze can burn and sort of char, like these two ribs here I'm turning over. And if that happens, just quickly paint those with a whole bunch of the glaze, and then hope the other side is okay, which as I pull these off the grill, you'll see it was. But even though those two went a little too far, unless we're charring the entire surface, they're gonna taste fine. Okay, a little bit of burnt sugar actually tastes good, as anyone that's eaten a creme brulee will tell you. But the point is we don't wanna push these so far that everything turns black, right? Those will not taste as good, is ones we pull off at this point. And that's it, once we've gone far enough and we've removed those to a plate, we'll head back inside, where while they're still hot, I do like to brush on a little more glaze, which is really gonna give us that last final layer of stickiness. Oh, they're already sticky. But if I've learned one thing, a sticky rib cannot be too sticky. So I went ahead and brushed on one more application and they went from already gorgeous to even more gorgeous. And then if this was just for us, I would serve right on this plate. But as you know, I am contractually obligated to take some pictures. So I did transfer those to another plate and garnish with a little bit of freshly sliced green onion. And then I did take a few pictures, but very few. Because I could not wait to eat one of these ribs. So I grabbed one and bit in. And that, my friends, in a word, was spectacular. And you can see how amazingly beautiful these are. And I'm sure you can imagine how delicious they are. But what really gets me using this technique is that perfect textural contrast between that moist succulent meat inside and that sticky, crusty, caramelized surface. It's just an incredibly enjoyable rib eating experience. And as far as the perfect doneness on a rib, you know you've nailed it when the meat is not falling off the bone, where you actually have to bite it to get it off. But once you do, it comes off perfectly clean. All right, to me that is exactly how it needs to be. Oh, and it was right about here I remembered I had potato salad and coleslaw to enjoy with this. So I went ahead and plated some up and continued on. And yes, I've heard all the ridiculous arguments that if it was a perfectly cooked rib, you don't need a sauce. Well, I could not disagree more. But having said that, that really is a dumb argument, since we're talking about two totally different things. Okay, I love a dry-aged steak, just with some salt on it, and that's it. And that is perfection. But I've had that same cut of steak done as an Asian style barbecue, which might have actually been more sauce than meat, and that was also perfection. So the point is we shouldn't compare these to traditional barbecued ribs, and we should just enjoy these for what they are, something much, much better. I mean different, and better. So whether you're a pitmaster purist, who might be tempted to make fun of these without even trying them, or you're just a food lover like me, who wants to enjoy a delicious, sweet and savory sticky rib. Regardless, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.